The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. I know that I'm exactly what I was meant to be. I'm a big fish in a small pond, got the day free and the night's long. I create my own reality, who I am is fine with me. Hi, Leo. Hi, Maria. How's it going, honey? It's going really good. Happy Tuesday. So, happy Tuesday. Hey, everybody. This is Maria from What's the Story with Maria. How's it going? And that is my guy Friday, Leo Rodriguez. There he is. The one, the only, the spectacular Leo Rodriguez. He's the man behind the curtain. Everything that happens during our show Leo is running from hey, no Idlewild, California. The behind the curtain. So, Leo, how's it going this week? Is it is uh, your camp is over for for a week? Uh, camp is over, but after school started, so already. Oh yeah, we. Uh, I, I think because last year being the way it was, everybody needs a little bit more of a refresher that yeah. has been in a classroom setting. So, this school district at least started this, and the kindergartners I know are going longer. Right yeah. off the bat, and uh, you know we got to play a little catch up. I'm I'm sure of it. So well, um, oh look who's here. Of course, our very famous Rena Cruniali Berge, my cousin from Massachusetts. Oh, the weather She's girl. The in. Our weather girl. Yeah, she's our weather girl. Mm-hmm. And Joe Gala. Oh my God. So Rena says hello and happy Tuesday. Rena, we can't start without you. You know that. And um. Uh, Joe says, I've been refreshing for the past 20 minutes. Maria has two of my favorite men on earth. I know, Joe. I know these are your guys. These, this is your posse. As a matter of fact, in if you look at the promo, I did find a picture of uh, Peter Inello and Joe Gullo was there along with Annette Tito and some other friends at the restaurant, Rick's Club American, which is... Uh, yes. How cool is that? Oh, my God. Vincenzo D'Amato. Hi, uh, he goes by Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hello, uh, Maria. Jeep, up the job. Uh, keep up the job you're doing. Yes, I will. Thank you, Vincenzo. Okay, so Joe Gala, Louise Figs has joined us. Peter Arnella looking good as always. Yes, he is going to be on. We are so Stephen Wishnoff. Oh my God, this is all. This is their crew. This is their crew. I love it. Maria, it took a while to night. find you, but here you are. Yes, Stephen. I'm so glad you found us. Uh, and I'm so glad, uh, you know, Joe Gullah was on our show. Was it last week or the week before? It was last week. Last week, Joe Gullah, he is famous. And uh, we had so much fun with Joe. And I've been dying to get Peter uh, Ionella on. And I just couldn't get a hold of him. So finally this week, I, I reached out to Joe. I'm like, Joe, can you just send me his number? You know that I was texting the wrong guy. I don't know who, who I was texting, but they weren't getting back to me. And I, I thought, what? You know, well, how rude. Like it's what is up with Peter? And then as soon as I did have the right number, he literally texted me well, back. You know, you're so busy. All of a sudden, we went to like you know full speed ahead. What are you, your schedule again? I can never remember when I'm texting you. I don't want to text you at work. Well, thank you for scrolling it. Yes, on Monday nights, I'm at the Stonewall Inn with Susan Campanero, who you know how much fun I have with Susan. I'm so so that is 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the Stonewall Inn upstairs. They have a piano bar. And then Wednesdays, I'm at the duplex from 9 to 4 a.m. with this wonderful, wonderful new employee. His name is Zach Nolan. I love working with him. He's great. And G. Enrique, most of the time, is there. I think this week it's going to be a woman named Sarah Glassman, who I'm looking forward to meeting. I heard she's great. And then Fridays, I'm at Brandy's. And often I pick up Saturdays. However, this Saturday, I will not be at Brandy's because... I thank you, Leo. You are on the ball. I am doing a wonderful, I'm part of a great production company called New Dawn Productions, which my friend Bethany Vaughn, I used to work with her at Romy's Quarter Deck in Danvers. We worked together 30, over 30 years ago. We did a lot of dinner theater and she reached out and started this wonderful new company and I'm part of the company and I'm so flattered. It's called Dreams, Jeans and Flying Machines. It's at the Emerson Inn 
this Sunday, August 15th at 2 p.m. And then uh, Thursday, August 19th at 7 p.m. This Sunday, um, there's a show from 2 to 3.30. It's like a 90-minute show. We're doing a 70 show called Dreams, Jeans, and Flying Machines. It's going to be so fun. And then if you want to stick around at 5, they have a clam bake. They have like a lobster bake. Which just sounds delicious. So and you got a tour de force crowd with that. I mean, you got the boys. You got Bethany, who's. I mean, she's got a range up and down. Oh, Bethany's amazing. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. Her voice is like for days. And then uh, um, Andrew Hankinson and um, uh, Thomas Smoker and Holly's uh, Zag- Zagaria. So it's a nice, nice group. If you're on the North Shore of, of Massachusetts and you know where Rockport is, it's so beautiful. The Emerson Inn is uh, there, look it up. And it's only $20 for the show. So it's a steal, really. And they have a really nice room. And then if you want to eat afterwards, you're welcome to stick around. Rena's going to be there. Rena, yes, she gets to oh see Oh, my me. God. Are you bringing you the whole imagine? family? You take a lot of pictures. My sister's going to be there with her family, my Uncle Nikki, my Ziana, my cousin Marisa, the Raskowski is going to be there. Oh, my God. I know. It's going to be great. Watch your voice. Make sure you use mics because over all that noise, I don't know know, if you're going to be able to sing. I already – we Amanda, our chick magnet, has joined us. He said, because you will be drinking brandy. No, (laughs) Amanda, you don't want to see me drunk. It's not good. So, uh, uh, okay, Louise, oh, my God, that's hysterical. It's true. I was texting the wrong guy. So, um, okay, so lots of great things happening. Yes, please, if you're in Massachusetts this Sunday – 2 p.m. the Emerson Inn. If you can't make this Sunday, the Thursday show is going to be really great, too. Uh, and that's 7 p.m. also at the Emerson Inn. And then we're going to do some Christmas shows there as well. But we may do a few more 70 shows uh, in a month or two. We're Just right now, we're, we're launching it from the Emerson Inn. Cheryl Juliana Rubenstein. Hi, sweetheart. I've been thinking about you this week. She had a little surgery, and we are rooting for her. She's doing her. good? Yeah, I follow yep, that. I she's, hope she's doing, doing much good. better. She's in um, California as well. Leo, you got a lot of California people out there. I know. There. Well, when you come out to visit, we're going to have to do a little California road trip. I know. And Mandar right. asked a question before oh. uh, we – Mandar asked why I keep looking up right, and it's because I have uh, my camera here, but I have my main base, my control panel here for what's the story with Maria? Leo is so, so smart, uh, as we say so, in Massachusetts. He's wicked smart. I'm wicked smart. So he has all these bells and whistles. And yeah, all you see is Leo's cute little kitchen, his nice little pride shirt. But behind, the, that's why I call him the man behind the curtain. Amazing. Amazing. So Leo, thank you for doing all of this. I think we're ready to go. I think I, you and I have yapped enough. We I, have think, to I hope bring Terry on. hasn't eaten all the hors d'oeuvres that are left in the green room. I, I know. I, I, We're going to bring on our first guest. I've been trying to get this gentleman on the show for the longest time, but our schedules don't always mix. Um, lots of times he's working on this night because he works nights as we musicians do. And that's what we do. And I'm so excited to bring on the one, the only, Jerry Diefenbach. Oh, my God. Oh I my can't God. believe I'm here. Jerry, Hi. you look amazing. Thank you. And I've, I've been talking to all our mutual friends that are singers as well that work in the clubs, and they yeah. are just raving about you. You're back with with a hundred percent strength. COVID yeah. has that, had nothing on you, honey. No, I beat it. I had you, it for about two weeks. In, oh, you uh, did it? Huh? Yes, March. Uh, uh, the irony, March seventeenth, uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day. Wow. Is when I got it, and I was sick for about two weeks. And uh, by the end of March, uh, yep, yeah, I, I did fine. So, Jerry, yeah. how did now? I know you all. I'll, I mean, I'll we'll fill people in on what you do. Well, most people know who you yeah. are already, but a lot of, of our viewers that are new, yeah. Uh, so, Jerry, oh, Corinne Lyon just joined Hi, Corinne. us. Oh, oh my god, god. Hi, Corinne. Oh, we love Corinne. Corinne. Yes, we um, do. So Jerry Diefenbach is a singer songwriter. This is how I know Jerry. He's a singer songwriter, but he's also a comedian. And <laughs> you are Thank Jerry. You. That Jerry, is a ni- that's a very nice compliment. You, it's a truth. You you write <laughs> jokes that other people will do for years to come, <laughs> whether you're there or not. And well, um, that was that was help of the influence of Amy Engelberg, the woman I worked with for many years at the Duplex. She she kind of taught me how to be real and funny. So you know, all props to her. So in the in the, and that was the late eighties, Jerry, when you were in late eighties, early nineties. It was uh, 
we worked from 86 to 95, nine years. Together, yeah. you and yeah. Amy Engelberg. Yeah. And um, people still come in and ask for Jerry and Amy. <laughs> it's just amazing. And she's out in California now. She writes for television, she right? She writes for television with her sister, Wendy, and they do great. They have oh, they've wow. had some great, great shows. So Drop Dead Diva, big, big, big hit. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, but you don't just work at the duplex, you work in other clubs as well. Other clubs, uh, Don't Tell Mama and uh, the Stonewall Inn. We just okay. started, you and I just started doing that. And it's, I it's know, I'm, I, I really I like it. Upstairs. I'm really I enjoying like it, it. Yeah, I like it too. Uh, I like that the stage is up there. It's mm -hmm. raised, you know. It's very presentational. Room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So Which let's I like. I like the duplex because the duplex feels like more like a party room. Like we're we're really on top of the people. They're on top of us. Yeah. Which with COVID, we're kind of like, okay, let's party six feet from each other. But, you know, it, it works. Yeah, and then Don't Tell Mamas, you've been there a long time as well. About, yeah, about 10 years. About 10 years, yeah. Okay, so yep. tell everybody your schedule so they can find you easily. Well, uh, Thursday, Stonewall Inn, Fridays, Don't Tell Mama, and Saturday, the Duplex. So okay, so that, oh, you're be my three schedule. nights in a row. That'll be my schedule. Yep, for a while. Okay, that's yep, great. Yep, yep. Now, yeah. Jerry, are you still uh, uh, teaching voice? Not too much anymore. Um, I'm doing more, you know, I kind of use the, the lockdown as a reset, and I kind of thought of different objectives that I wanted to do. One of the things that I wanted to do is I've been telling stories about, I have been doing this for over 35 years. Yeah, um, I know. My, my first gig was a place called Bogarts on East 59th Street, which is now a kitchen and tile store, I what, think. What year was that, Jerry? 1984. Wow. Uh, March of 1984. Yeah, March of 1984. So my first gig at the duplex was my birthday, April 24th, 1984. So that which was is the first also, time I ever played the duplex. Which is also a famous person's birthday. Barbara Streisand and one of Shirley McLean's. <laughs> Thank you for getting that joke. You know, of this course. generation, you go, Shirley McLean, oh, what? They've never well, heard of the other know, side of the mountain, you know. <laughs> Jerry, I almost fainted the other day. Someone, one of these young kids, God bless their souls, asked me who, who, uh, Bette, Bette Miller was. was. You told me that. Oh, my God. I, I really, <laughs> there was a sadness in my heart. <laughs> yeah. There was a sadness and in Joe, my heart. And Joe Gullah had to explain to his personal trainer who Judy Garland was. I said, I know. you've never seen The Wizard of Oz? Uh, anyway. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> oh, Annette Zito has joined us. You know, we really love Annette Zito. I love Annette. Jerry, I got to tell you, though, you know what I did? I had this young, very young kid that uh, kind of was ruffling my feathers oh, my a little bit because he was a little too sensitive and he had newly out. And I said to him, I'm going to give you a, an assignment as an older yeah. person. Okay. Welcome to our community. Now go and watch as much Joan Rivers as you can. <laughs> and tell can I me show you me. something? Yes, Can I please. show you something? I don't yes. know if this will show up. Let's see. Oh, my yeah. God, Jerry. That is Joan. Um, wait. Uh, how can I angle this? I'm so bad at this. Oh, Leo. No, no, no. You, there we this, go. There we go. Wow. That's Did Joan. she sign it for I, you, Jerry? Yes. There's when we worked together at the duplex back in 2000 to about 2003. And uh, she, she, she used to do her trial shows for her big Las Vegas shows as a benefit at the duplex. So she would try out jokes, basically. So right. I was told to just go on play very up-tempo show tunes. Okay. And then uh, when she came on, you had to play Anchors Away. Da, 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 da. She walked <laughs> on stage. She dismissed you. And she told me backstage, you go off stage 41 minutes, not one minute more, not one minute less. 41 minutes and you come back on stage. I was like, okay. Wow. And I did. And we, we had the best time. She hired me to do her private shows, private parties in her apartment. Oh my so God. I went up there for like three years. I was, I was with her and uh, it was just, it was amazing. So yes, Joan Rivers, absolutely icon, icon for us. Icon. Yeah. Yes. And, and you know, yes, like I love that. it's become such an overly sensitive world. I mean, I'm all for respecting people. Don't get yeah. me wrong, but you know, we come from a different generation where it was okay to make jokes. Yeah. And, I, and she was she wouldn't make fun of herself, but boy, oh. she would go after everybody. I worked with her right after 9-11, and there were some 9-11 jokes that she was trying out. And I gotta say, 
they they were relevant. They were, you know, they were they were kind of the back of our minds, something we thought about, and she right. said it, and we kind of went, Oh God, I know I'm not supposed to laugh at that, but you're right. You right. know, right. Well, was just, well was that amazing. was it. That's what it was. You know, she would say things that she would take all the risks for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether you loved her yeah. or not. But when I I used to listen to her also on like, um, well, when CDs, when I had a CD in my car. Right. Well, that album. To her CDs. <laughs> yeah. And I would at first I'd be completely offended for the first 15 minutes. I think, what? Oh, my God. I can't believe she said that. And then it would settle in and I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I yeah. think that we. I, I feel like we need a little Joan back in the world. Yeah. We just become so overly sensitive. Yeah. You know? but can I tell you, she was one of the most real lovely people. I would get handwritten and I still have them handwritten. Thank you cards. Really? When I would do the parties when someone sent her a thank you card saying, Oh my God, your pianist played my favorite song. She would send that to me, forward it to me by mail. Uh, from Mrs. Rosenberg, I have the ad return address, Mrs. E Mrs. Ed Rosenberg, with her address, and it would say, "See, you are loved." Oh, I mean, wow. she was she was that warm, and you know, when you really, when you really, I don't want to say measured up, but when she knew she could kind of trust you and right. she liked you, there was no bigger uh, fan in your, in your, in your yard. And I just, I absolutely loved her. Miss her. Isn't I miss that her. wonderful? Let me just read some of yeah. the comments. Liz Goldenberg says, I agree with you, Maria. And I'm sure I think knowing yeah, Liz the way I, I do about the oversensitivity, Liz. Liz is great. Yeah. Um, I love Liz. And, uh, uh, and as he said, <laughs> she, we need, jo we need more. Jo <laughs> <laughs> we do. And she, yeah. uh, also, you know, that whole fashion, red carpet thing. That, that was, was amazing. Fun. That was all her. I used to watch that show religiously. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe Gullis yeah. says, loving Jeff, Jer Jerry's effortless style, looking breezy, fresh, bicep actuation, uh, actuating. So, well, that's funny. Cause I call him guns Gulla. So, you know, well, he does. He's go, all Gullis. beefed up. Yep, and then, Oh, Jackie Fornatella has joined us. She's so oh! sweet. Jackie, yep, it's her birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Jackie. Happy birthday, Leo. What's up, honey bunny? I, there's so many Jerry fans. Do you have somebody to wrangle all these people together? Like, Well, from kind of what I hear, from what I hear, there was one person that just was incensed that there wasn't a Jerry D from Back fan club. Not like some kind of crazy, a crazy kind of person that would do anything, right? No, but she started no. a Jerry D from Back fan club. And I believe to this day she is his biggest fan. Judy Mason. Oh, my God. Hello, Judy. <laughs> Judy, Hello, my gorgeous love. Hi. Hi. You know yeah, we have Leo to do something with that fan page. You know, I was off. I've, I've I've not been on Facebook for you know for a long time. It was only during lockdown. And I don't tell mom, my friends said you have to join. It's like okay. I used the stage name that I wanted as a as a kid, which was my nickname growing up and my favorite aunt's last name. So that's what I'm on Facebook as. But. And I'm not telling a lot of people because I don't no, want don't people do from grammar you. school all finding me. I hated my people. I hated my people in grammar <laughs> school. But anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've thought about that Facebook page for a while. It's like we have to talk afterwards. We'll, we'll put some stuff up there. I mean, Absolutely. I get requests all the time. Like people say I, I have a YouTube the page. Jerry, oh, am I going? The, the, okay, the Jerry Diefenbach page. And, and then I just I just accept them in. So people are constantly looking for okay. the page, right? Mm -hmm. And all yeah. right. So we're so all right, we're gonna we're gonna get it up and up to date. And yeah. Okay. And I have a YouTube page, which I have, I'm posting videos of stuff that I did on television with Martha Reeves, with um yeah, just all different things and everything else. It's a you know, a little page, you know, compared to my I was inspired by my niece, Emily James, who is has like a huge, huge social media following is on as Vimeo videos that are like two million you know, views and everything else. So I just, you know, oh, there you go. Oh, there Leo, you're the best. Leo, Leo you're the amazing. best. Thank you. He really is. is. So that's Lee, uh, That's Jerry Diefenbach's YouTube page, which okay. maybe on your fan page, we, uh, we'll we figure out a way to get a link okay. to it. It's so easy. Now it's just Judy, getting easier gorgeous. and easier. I miss you. <laughs> I know. I know. We have to go to lunch. I invited yeah. you. Yeah. All right. I'm around this Saturday. We'll, we'll call. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Honey, thank you for coming on. Oh, I'm so happy to be hang here. Out. You Let's can hang guys. out if you want. If you oh, want yeah. 
I want, I, yeah, I want to be with Peter. I love Peter. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So why don't you okay. two hang on? If, if you can stay, Judy, hang on. We'll pop you out. We're going to pop Peter in, and then we'll pop you all back in. Okay, perfect. Okay? Yay! Wow, how fun is this? It's like so a little Leo, party. I know it is a party. So you, you, this is like the, everything is connected, right? So we had Joe Gullah last week. When I see Joe Gullah, I always think of Jerry Diefenbach because Jerry introduced me to Joe. Then Joe introduced me to Peter, but I already knew Peter from Jerry. So lots of times when I worked with Jerry on Saturday nights and I worked with Jerry for over 10 years on Saturdays, his friends from like back in the day would come in. And, and Peter was one of these people. And ja Jackie... Um, Dr. Um, Dr. Beth Rooney would come in, Corinne Lyon, all these amazing people. And um, we used to have so much fun. And Peter would get up and sing. But So I always knew Peter as a singer. Oh, you wow. Know? That's who he was to me. He was this amazing singer. Did a lot of doo-wop, has beautiful voice. And then I found out he was a doctor of education. I was like, what? And, um, and he was also an amazing, amazing cook. And he started making, uh, I mean, we'll bring him on. I'll talk about it. But so everybody, oh my God. And there he is. We're talking about you. There I am. Peter. Hello. Hi, everybody. It's Peter Ionello, everyone. My friend, Jerry's friend. I was just telling everybody, Peter, how you introduced me. I mean, I uh, Jerry introduced me to you and Joe Gulla. And it was just like this perfect circle of wonderful it's people. It's the big circle. It really is. And, um, so I always knew you as a singer, Pete. That's how I knew you. And then when you started, then I found out you were a doctor of education. And you did that for many, many years, right? Yeah, I still do. Oh, you're I still, still doing it. Yeah, I didn't I'm know still, if you had retired. Yeah, no, I still, I'm probably about another year and a half trying to get the schools through this pandemic and, you know, trying to help that out. And hopefully uh, we'll settle by next year. But I'm thinking about another year and a half, two years, and then I'll retire. I wow. also teach graduate school also. So that's, you do? Uh, I do. I do. I do a, a course up in Albany once a year. I also met, uh, mentor doctoral students. So, you know, that's that's another thing that I keep, you know, keep busy with. So it's interesting. It's interesting. And Lu but, Louise Fig said, and yeah. he's an amazing friend too. I'm My sure. Louise. He Louise? really is. Louise and I just spent a, a, a couple of nights together in um, Monticello at the Resorts Casino. Oh, so really? we had a lot of fun together. We both celebrated our big milestone birthdays and we've been friends since we're 10 years old. So, oh yeah, my God, really nice. I, I'm right behind yeah. you, Pete. I'm going to have that milestone in May. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We look good. Oh we, do. We, look, we do. We look good and we're happy and we're productive and we're doing what we love, which is wonderful. And we're busy. And we're and busy. We're busy. And, you know, and, and, and that's, that I think is the, you know, the crux of everything. You just keep yourselves busy and, you know, and creatively busy, right? Yes. You, know, you got to be creative. You got to just not be busy. You have to be, you know, filling your, your voids with things that interest you, that you love, that you have passion for. So I'm Absolutely. really lucky because everything I do, I have a passion for. Now, now Pete, you, you also are an amazing cook. I know around Easter time, I, I, I have uh, purchased your pizza rusticas. Yes which are off the hook, incredible. Talk about going back to my childhood and, and just amazing. So I've always loved that. But then you bought you and your partner, right? Correct. Bought a restaurant. Correct. So there are three of us who went in on the deal. My partner, Nick, who is somewhere around here, cause I'm in the restaurant. He may pop in and say hello. Yes. I would um, love it. And um, our other partner, Anthony, who, uh, we met at the restaurant because we were customers for 20 years. So we would come here every Friday night and it's local and it's fun and it's a nice place to be and it's a comfortable environment. And um, we were doing probably Friday nights and I started coming a little more often because I would be working late, stop in, get something to eat before I went to bed and went home. Um, you know, so we sort of found out it was was for sale. And we went on this like binge for almost two years before we were able to finalize um, the deal. So wow. it took a long time. And then we were able to finalize it. Come here, Nick. Nick is here. Come here. No, Yay, come here. let's just get Nick face. in. Come on. Just, just come over come here. on, Nick. Don't be shy. Wait, this way. Gotta go this way. There he is. There Hi, he is. Nick. 
Say hello. Hi, Marie. How are you? Hi, buddy. We got you on the show. We're, we're uh, Nick. I mean, uh, Peter was just explaining to us how you bought the. It took a few years. You got the business. Now you guys got it, and then COVID happened, right? Right. So we purchased on March sixth. Unbelievable. We signed all the paperwork. We went. We came back. We looked around like, oh wow, this is all ours, and. It was a great Friday night, and it was a, a pretty decent weekend. And then all of a sudden, uh, 10 days later, we had to close. Oh, my so, God. Yeah. So, um, But I will say to you that um, we've said this a thousand times, that the community really kept us afloat. Um, to-go orders, of, and the time when we were closed and only able to do to-go orders, we were doing 70 or 80 to-go orders a night. Um, people That's were just amazing. So, so generous and so kind and... Uh, Billy Hubner, actually, my my friend Billy Hubner from the Duplex, did a whole Manhattan run one day for all the cabaret people, and he called really? them. He said, "I'm going to Peter's restaurant. Let's order." And so they came up, and uh, and then in, in May, I think it was right May, we we were able to open up outside. Outside, right? And uh, we opened up outside, and then inside came at fifty percent in July. So it was slow, um, but we were able to open up outside, and outside was pretty much. 40 tables at that point because we had our whole parking lot with tables. It's smaller this year. We have the patio out there. It's absolutely beautiful, but we've been able to do so much in this, this last year. So and tell everybody where it is. It's not in the city. It's right outside of the not. city. It is in Congress, New York, which is near Nyack. Um, so if you know Nyack, West Nyack, it's a very easy ride from the city. It's literally in West side Palisades Parkway. And then Route 303, which is the local road. Yeah. This is the, the place. This is what it looks like at night. It's oh, called beautiful. Rick's Club American. Um, it's been here for 40 years plus. Um, and, you know, we, we love it. We just, uh, you know, we, we really, we're really enjoying it. This guy is just doing everything. He's here 24-7 managing the place and, and running it all. And, um and, you know, and Nick, Nick and did, pitch in. did he have did he have experience doing that before? Is this a brand new career? Well, it's a new career in a lot of ways, but he's had been in the food business his whole career okay. uh, on a different end. And then his brother owns two really great restaurants in Connecticut, so it's and it's all been around us. He also was a bartender, and I was a waiter, so we have a lot of you know joint experience together. So, yeah, you, you know. have to kind of know all angles of the business. And, and so it pretty much is people are back now and everything's happening, right? It's, it's back yeah. to. Yeah. So, they're, they're coming back. I mean, we're seeing really good crowds and, you know, we're doing the best that we can in terms of, um, you know, trying to just, we do weekly specials. So the specials change every week. So are you going? Okay. Nick's saying goodbye. Okay. Well, goodbye. thank you. Okay. Thanks for popping on Nick. So, so now, Go ahead. Tell me about the so specials. We have weekly specials that go out. We have a wonderful chef who stayed with us um, after we bought the place. And that was part of our agreement that we really wanted to know that he would stick around because he's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, he creates these great dishes. So basically, the, the menu had always been standard chicken and ribs and, and, and appetizers that look like that. And really wonderful things. Just local, you know, sandwiches and burgers. Now... We have all of that, plus about 20 new items that we put on the menu um, about nine months ago that um, are, you know, a little more gourmet. So we have this beautiful risotto. We have wow. um, we have a special risotto almost every week. Uh, this week, it's it's summer corn risotto. Um, wow. You know, we have, we have a couple of chicken dishes that are on it. We have a couple of salmon dishes. Um, if you look, let's see, right over there, that's those are our tacos. So we have fish tacos and we have beef and chicken tacos. The but this is a very eclectic menu. Look at that. That's baked acorn squash, a beautiful vegetarian dish. That's from the fall to the early spring. We have that. That's um, incredible. Can you tell me the chef's name? Are you allowed to tell us the chef's sure. name? Sure. The chef's name is Dayo, D-A-Y-O, uh, Law, L-A-W. He's really great. Um, he's been around for a long time in, uh, here. That's our chicken. That is our chicken, Amish chicken. Roasted oh, my Amish God. Chicken that with looks carrot mashed potatoes. Delicious. Just delicious. Oh, so my God. It's really, it, it's a wonderful menu. It really is. It's a, um, you know, you, it's something for everybody. And what we wanted to do is make sure if you came in with your family that somebody can order a sandwich. Oh, that's macaroni and cheese. That's oh, my God. For. 
But you can order a sandwich or you can order a chicken dish or you can order a steak or you can order an eggplant. There's, right. there's something for everybody, you know, and now, that's, that's the beauty of it. Speaking of eggplant, before the show started, we, we were checking your, making sure you were popping on. And you said that you're making, you have eggplant at your house now that you grew, that you're making campanata. Campanata, yes. I'm making campanata. Um, I had, last week I made um, stuffed eggplant boats. I had some guests over and I made these mini stuffed eggplant boats stuffed with rice and sausage and tomatoes and zucchini. Oh my God. And I had a lot of eggplant that I cored out left over. So I chopped it all up and I was sauteing it tonight for um, the caponata. So I'll have a nice batch of um, that is, uh, is, everybody looks forward to it. So Absolutely. And you've yeah. always been an amazing cook, Peter, oh, right? thank you. Yeah. yeah. Always. I, mean, I learned a lot. I learned a lot um, in restaurants, but I learned a lot from my mother who is an excellent cook. Um, she just loves it, and she's been. She's really. You can see she really loves to cook because everything is just so good when she cooks it. So, and Nick's a really great cook too. Um, you know, Nick does a really great job in the kitchen when he gets there, or when I allow him in there because I'm always in there. Yeah. So, but really, it's good amazing. Stuff. Really you know, you stuff. talked about being creative and staying creative, and cooking is one of the best ways to stay creative yeah. on a weekly basis. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, and you know, the funny thing is I'm still working full time, but I come over here at night. So I'm working at home during the day and at night I'm here probably almost every night. Some nights I'll relieve Nick. Some nights we'll just stay, to, you know, hang out together. Anthony comes in almost every night. So the three of us are around a lot. And, you know, I'm there. There are nights when I get put into the kitchen because we need someone to expedite or we need someone to, you know, uh, have, uh, supervise the food running and things like that. Um, we have live music too, believe it or not. We have wow. um, we have bands that come in every uh, every Thursday, and then this month, for some reason, we're like overloaded with bands and DJs. So I think it's like Wednesday, Thursday. This week it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Next week I think it's Wednesday, Thursday. So um, and and people are loving it. So as long as the weather holds out, they're outside. Otherwise, we put them inside. That is amazing. Now, with your permission, I'd like to pop our our mutual friend Jerry Diefenbach back in. Oh my oh, God, there he is. Peter! Hi, Jerry. I'm staying. Oh, I <laughs> love it. I don't know. I, don't know. I think Jerry just froze. Jerry but Leo, froze is uh, Judy still around? We've ever told that story. Have we ever told that story? So uh, you know, Peter's name was very similar. Okay. So Peter's name, obviously, is very similar to this guy, the singer who used to advertise himself on television, Peter Lemongella. So there was one night at the early duplex in the early in the late 80s where we, we said, let Peter Lemongella is going to come on. We had this disgruntled table that was sitting there. We're like, I hated everything. And all of a sudden we said, okay, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Lemongella. And like, they were paying their check and they were walking out the door. They said, oh, we're staying. And they sat down thinking you, you were Peter Lemongella. <laughs> Of course, you were better than Peter Lemongella. Oh, my but that, God. So that started like a whole shtick routine. It's like whenever you say Peter Ionello's name, Joe Gullo will say, oh, I'm staying. So there you are. I'm so happy <laughs> to be it here. Now. It's, it, has stuck, it has stuck till this day. It's so funny how, you know, that's, that's one of my favorite stories. Guys, my phone is going to die. Know. Okay, no, honey, Judy, this, this is well, Peter, I'm the restaurant you, that I want us to go to. We're going to come see you, okay? okay yeah. Love you oh, guys. Because really. I, I wanted too. her to pop in to say hi to Jerry. All right, honey. Mwah. So I have so been trying to... One of the... Go ahead, honey, go ahead. Say it again. No, I was no, going to say, say one say of that. my goals is to get a big group of people together to come up. And Joe Gulla, Susan Campanero, my friend Jeffrey and Steven, Jerry, let's all go up. And get a big America. table, um, yeah. you know, make Mac a reservation. Macaroni and cheese. That'll be, that'll, Holy that'll be crap really great. There. That'll be, I'm going, going this way. Okay. That would be yeah. wonderful. And whenever you come up, you let me know. Oh, there we go. I actually have oh, the yeah. iPad sitting on a caddy of condiments right now. I'm, oh. I'm sitting in the restaurant. So it's sitting right here. So a I caddy don't of condiments. Oh, my God. There we go. Caddy That's of condiments. the name of a cookbook. But, um, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you know, funny thing, Maria, and, and this is so funny because this, this, Jer this Peter Lemangelo story went on for years and years <laughs> and years. And they, they, the funniest piece to this was that there was a woman who used to come into the duplex. Her name was Janet Sumner. Oh, she was Janet. the nicest fun, right? 
She was old, yes. much older, and she was she was a real patient. She went out of, every of night to every bar. Every night. Yeah. And one night she came in and she she sees me and she said, "You know, I went to La Maganette tonight to see Peter Lemongello." And I sat there and I said, "That's not Peter Lemongello. <laughs> You're Peter Lemongello." And you are so much better than that man who's Peter Lemongello. And it, it, it was just, and I said, no, Janet, you have to understand, I'm really not Peter Lemongello. I know. She said, I never knew that. I so love that. She was, she was great, though. Do you remember when great. we used to play musical chairs late night at oh. the duplex? Amy would have yeah. musical chairs. I mean, this is what we would do. And... Janet Sumner was, she was probably in her late 70s, probably when she was around Easy. there. She was the most ferocious musical chairs player in the world. She <laughs> would push and shove people out of the way. You never saw an elderly woman like just like, no, I'm the champion here. She was amazing. She took it very oh seriously. Yeah, she was so yeah. great. She was so great. There were so many amazing characters throughout through our you know oh, tenure. We had so much had, fun. And I, yeah. I was kind of there sort of in the beginning, like in the early eight, like when you started. You were you were there in, like you were there in the start. You, Joe Gala, yeah. Netzito, yeah. Beth. Yeah. Uh, Corinne oh, says we she, Nancy Corinne Blackman. says she remembers that. Corinne remembers it. Oh yeah. Lisa yeah. Lacasho. I met she's, I met Lem, uh, Lemon Jello in Florida. Uh, this is so funny, this Peter <laughs> Lemangelo thing. He's going to sue us, probably, if he's still alive. It or not. Well, I oh have his God. autograph because uh, okay. uh, friends of mine went somewhere, and he was playing, and they told him the whole story about how I'm Peter Ionello, but it's really, they call me Lemangelo. And he signed a little, like, notepad to Peter, Peter Lemangelo. And I actually oh had God. that on display at one of my Good shows many, many years ago. Yay for him. So funny. Yay for him. Now, <laughs> let, let's so just funny. go back to you. The Jerry, now, uh, Peter, you've done many shows with Jerry as your musical director, right? Yes. Pete, yes, many. Peter was the booking manager at the duplex for a time. Really? I you know, yes. I didn't know yes. that. He was a singing was the waiter for a little bit. Actually, yeah. I was the publicist, and then I worked with Colette on the booking. Colette, the Colette yep. Black on the booking, yeah. And that's when the yeah. duplex was across the street, right? Um, I, it was. I, I think was you the, were in sixty one, Christopher. By the I, time it was you were the booking new manager, one. yes. As soon as yeah. we went over yeah. the new one, I became the publicist. So right, right after. Yeah, because we were bringing in all the talent that was like had been in the at the tables who had been regulars, like Bill Morgan, Kirk Kelly. They were right. all regulars. They were customers. And then when we moved across the street to 61 Christmas Street, we needed a bigger staff. And we said to these people, uh, you want to work here? So, of course, wow. we, we brought in Bill Morgan, Kirk Kelly, Peter. Uh, a whole bunch of people came on as yeah. employees, you know, and yeah. managers, some owners, Bill Morgan. I mean, you know, just amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah. Well, yeah. um. It I got to I got to tell you, you know, I I'm so I feel so privileged that we were I mean, you guys were there before I was, but I feel like I came in at a great time you where did. I got to hear your stories like Jerry, you really kind of like just welcomed me in and told me so many of those amazing stories and introduced me to all your friends and I knew a yeah. lot of them from, you know, like Colette and those people and Bill, of course, I worked with and Kurt. Yeah, but course. it's so nice to be, you're kind of a connector between that world and then those of us that came in after that. Mm -hmm. And I, I named the, the show, the, the, the name of this episode is We Are the Classics. Because uh, yeah. I, I feel like, you know, for the newer generation, it's maybe they want to learn, if they want to learn about what, what uh, Piano Bar was back in the day, yeah, you know they, yeah. they it would be behoove them to sit down with with you guys, you know, and talk yeah. to uh, Kurt or and it, that is what it really was, and it was an amazing it was very, time. Yes, it was very different. It was pre karaoke. It was really people coming in to be entertained, and you had an agenda. You had a, a song set list. Um, right, right. You would do definitely. You did participatory stuff because you know you had to do the show tunes. When I came in, it was you know you play the show tunes, everyone sings the show tunes, and uh, to the original duplex. But there was this pianist I always want to mention, and I always want to call him out because he was amazing. This man named John Lenahan, 
who was the sweetest man in the world. He worked in, you know, at Mama's. And I used to go in to see him after I worked at Bogart's. And he would play all the show tunes and everything else, but then he would just break out into a pop song. He would do like Red Rubber Ball by Circle, the Paul Simon song. And he would do these every now and then he would just put in a pop song. And I would say, wow, that could work. So that when I went to the duplex, I started kind of implementing more pop songs in, and people liked that. And you know, it may have it may have changed like some of the you know the formatting in Piano Bar, and some may say, "Oh, I wish it were show tune." Well, yeah, you have Maurice Crisis; they're keeping that going. But that kind of put the the pop music in Piano Bar, right. and uh, and it, again, it was pre karaoke, so you it was kind of left to the people who learned songs and memorized lyrics to get up and sing. You know, now it's a different day. Everyone's more participatory. Everyone has seen American Idol, you know, and it's, it seems like it's more easy to do it. Or friends will, you know, tell a, a friend to do it on a dare and they'll go up to a microphone and you just have to say, all right, this is no longer kind of like the showcase it used to be. It's a party room. We're all going to party together. And that, right. that really is how it's kind of evolved now. And, yeah. you know, I've accepted that. It's it's one of those things, adapt or die. You know, that's right. what that's my husband exactly always says. Right. Adapt or die. Yeah. And right. that's what we've done. And, you know, you get you get your occasional showcase moment. You get to do your thing. You bring up somebody like Peter Ionello, who when he's into Mamas, I bring him up and he'll do Run Around Sue. And the, and the crowd just goes crazy. And it's a classic old song. But yeah. it's done well because he knows how to perform. When you yeah. got up, when we worked together, I mean, you would galvanize the room too. So you have Absolutely. that mom those moments. But, you know, you have to kind of give it over to what the generation wants and you give and take a little. You know, that's but what you, know, you know what? It's funny that you say that, Jerry. My motto this year has been don't hate, educate. Because yeah, I think exactly. a, our, our first reaction, and I'm, I'm going off of what you're saying, and my yeah. first reaction is to think, oh, you, this is not the way we do it. And my second reaction is, well, they don't know. They're yeah. a new audience. So no. rather than have a resentment, let's educate them. Let's, and let's bring them on to the party because we are, we are running a party. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, now I want to just mention that Joe Gullah said that you guys brought the furniture over from the old duplex <laughs> and the new duplex. Is that true? Yes, yes. we did. Yes, yes we did. Yes. Carried oh it my over. God. And I yep. actually had a chair from the old duplex in my house for about 20 years. It was oh, this wow. rotten chair that was barely on four legs. And finally, my father was, I left it at my parents' house when I moved. And my father was like, I think we're going to get rid of that chair now. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll part with it. But it, it was funny. It was like sneaking the chair out without anybody seeing it, throwing oh it in the car. Too funny. That's you know, you brought up yeah. a good point. You brought up a good point, Maria, about, you know, educate, right? So yeah. we grew up in homes that had music playing all the time, right? Our parents were, were playing music. Our families were playing Playing it music. out loud. Out loud. So you yeah. had all of those experiences. And, and these kids are yeah. not, they don't have those experiences. They have an iPad. They have a phone. Everything is on the phone. It's, it's like this. It's perfect. You know, and it's, it's very yeah. difficult to, to explain that and explain the differences for what, how we grew up. Yeah, but I find that this younger generation loves it as much as we love it, as much as people before us love it. They just have to be introduced to it, you know? Yeah. And then well, I feel like it's up to us to educate them on how on what the um, the protocols are, what the the format is, how yeah. we do it. This is how you do it. You tip your piano player. You ask for a request. The piano yeah. player does. If you'd like to sing, let us know. But I think right. people are open to to learning. I really mm -hmm. do. I believe yes, that people music, are yeah, open. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Now listen. Yeah. We have to take. A, oh, right. go ahead. Music's the universe. Music's the universal language, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. You know, that's what it is. Yeah. I've always yeah. said that if you watch a baby, a baby that is barely crawling, will be crawling, music will come on and that baby will start dancing and making yeah. sounds. You see yeah. an older person, even a person <coughs> that has Alzheimer's will sing along. One of my friends, you know, Patty, you know, Patty Connolly. Patty Connolly is a wonderful piano player in the city. Goes yeah. by uh, Patty. Patty on the yeah, piano. Patty. Yeah. He does a Love lot that. of work with Alzheimer's patients. 
Oh, and he said that, that he is always blown away that they don't, they will not remember his name. They won't remember even what day it is. But as soon as he starts playing the songs of their youth, they know every single lyric. In the same way, I worked with a woman named Margaret Whiting, who, you know, some people may know, uh, who was, you know, the, the Peggy Lee, Rosemary Clooney era. And I worked with her for a long time. And then after she got sick with dementia, um, I would go over to her apartment and I would play for her. And she, at the point where she really couldn't even like complete a sentence or she didn't remember who I was, I would sit down at the piano. I would play someone to watch over me. Every lyric was there. Oh my oh, God, she I would, got chills, she just, Sherry. She would just start to sing it. That 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 is the power of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's absolutely. nothing more powerful than music, and there's nothing yeah. that brings people together more than Joe Gullis has so many memories. But when Danny Bonaduce yeah. came in one night, and Jerry did his famous Partridge Family medley with him in the room, man, oh man, it, yeah. it, was, it touched me so to see how happy Amy was for Jerry. It was a very memorable, beautiful moment. Amy, Danny Bonaduce kept saying, "I'm an icon. I'm an icon." <laughs> oh my god we've had a lot of famous people come in there over yeah, the years you've had them we've had them yeah absolutely we, we connie, francis, have... connie, connie francis connie francis came in one night remember that's right she came a couple yes. of times but one, one she, yeah scotty night, trout was playing that night i remember scotty that. trout yeah. was playing and she yeah. got up on a chair and she started singing and he gave her the the opening for um where the boys are and, she, right. and he plays that beautiful intro you know vamp and all of a sudden she looked at him and she said no, honey, that's Brenda Lee's key. And he had a chair. It, was, it, was, wow. it was so funny. It was so classic, but so funny. Oh, that's great. And it was that's really amazing. Oh, it really was great. Yeah. Well, when had, Jerry when Jerry used to play, uh, Martha uh, Reeves came in. Do you yeah, remember that night, Jerry? Martha Reeves came in about uh, 12 years ago. Uh, 2011, she came in. She was doing a VH1 special, and she came in. And she hung out with us. Played tambourine for everyone. Oh, my. She sat next to Jerry and just yeah. said, is it okay? Actually, she just took it. And I was like, I'm not going to. Of course, yeah. Martha Reeves can play the piano, uh, the tambourine. She tambourine. played for us all night. And then she got up and sang and blew the whole room away. It yeah. was incredible. There was another night that Petula Clark came in. Uh, she was doing Blood Brothers on Broadway. And she came down to uh, the duplex, courtesy of my friends Shauna Hicks and Matt Marholan, who was the Miss Stage Manager. They brought her in. Uh, to see me because she wanted to record one of the songs that I wrote, Bound the Safe. And so she came in and Matt kept saying, do your Petula Clark impersonation. I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm not going to do that. He said, no, do it. So I started like doing the intro for, as if I was going to do it. And the, the, the room was packed. She was like sitting just to the right of me. So maybe the whole room couldn't see her. So I'm playing the intro to downtown and she looks at me and she just goes, give me the microphone. Oh so she takes God. the microphone and she sings downtown. So somebody in the back of the room who was a regular said, oh, my God, Jerry really does sound like Petula Clark tonight because they couldn't see her. Are you and kidding Jim, me? No, and Jim Curtin, the, the burger Curtin, turned to him and said, that is Petula Clark, you asshole. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm telling you that the right. most amazing things have happened there. I have to take a minute because I got to do the food segment segment of the show, yes. which is, of Go course, ahead. called Go Ahead, Keep Eating. On the count of three, we all going to say it. One, two, three. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Keep, Keep eating. eating. Keep eating. What did I make Get tonight? Look, I know uh, Rick's Club American, but I, I agree with you, Peter. I like to stay creative every week. I'm on the keto because I gained a ton of weight in covid so I'm trying to get back in my pants and it's working. I lost 12 pounds. All right. So now I made uh, scallops with bacon, roasted red peppers, um, a dill, white wine, lemon, and some crushed red peppers and garlic, of course. So that's nice. what I'm eating tonight. Yeah. Because you can have that on the keto, all these delicious things. And then just a simple summer salad, little red leaf lettuce, some red peppers, Persian cucumbers. I'm going to put... Uh, Sicilian lemon olive oil on this and a fig uh, vinegar. Mm -hmm. And because I am on the keto, I can have these lemon, they are keto lemon cookies. So um, that's what I'm going to have. And I am going to get a big group together and we're all going to go to your restaurant, Peter. And then I'm going to be off Love my that. diet. Yeah. Love that. We all have to go off diet. Now, yeah. Peter, let me ask you something. 
is it uh, it sounds like it's a perfect place to for everybody to get different dishes and share do people do that yes. a lot a lot yes they do do that a lot a lot of times they share their appetizers um and then people will split the dinners and they'll want some somebody will order the special someone will order an eggplant and they'll split this week we have chicken salt and boca and oh we my have God. shrimp with a, a bean sauce yeah. it's just delicious. That so people great. are splitting those. So yeah, everybody everybody splits. They do split. Oh, man. So Jackie Fornatel says, show them how it's done. Uh, <laughs> uh, she also said she loved Margaret. And you know, it's just amazing. So many we you talked about Joan Rivers. Uh, and uh, how about the <laughs> Jerry? Did you have um Loretta Swit come in one night? No, that wasn't. I wasn't there for that. I do. Remember, right. I did hear about that, but no. Yeah, there was. I mean, yeah. Melissa Etheridge came in one night I on, you on talk that. Friday night with me and Michael Isaacs. I mean, so many. Brenda Vaccaro came in one night. She was incredible. Yeah. One of our favorite nights was we used to do an opening ceremony, and we used to do this thing where we'd light a a, 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 a sparkler, and the person who had the sparkler would run around the, the club as you could see them through the, the windows. So it was like the Olympic torch carrying our favorite wow. Olympic torch carrier, Larry Kramer, what? Larry Kramer came in who yeah. everyone you know, thinks of course, as you know, the very pugnacious political activist that he was and rightly so you have never seen a man laugh and smile so much the night he was there. I mean, oh, when, wonderful. when he died, all I could think of was that night that he was there. Uh, some regulars brought him in who worked with him regularly. And he was just loving on Amy and just very lovely to me. And I, that he was he was like one of my favorite guests. Ever. Well, Jerry, yeah. how about the night Wanda Sykes was in? Wanda Sykes sang New York. And she New got York up and, and sang with Jerry. It. it was hysterical. I just cursed through it. It was great. <laughs> but you're such a good sport about it. Oh, uh, Peter Chauncey Cooperman said, uh, everything is deli Delicious. So, oh, I love that chance, She's so good. Love now, you're uh, Matt Coke. I saw Matt Coke up here a while ago. Oh, yeah. he, they live close. He and Bobby, Bobby. Belfry live yeah, close Matt enough. Yeah, Matt and Bobby are in Nyack, which is, you know, five miles from here, not even. Yeah. 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 And they're so they've close. been there. Yeah. They're also, very I know Richard Skipper has been, loves your restaurant. Last nice. summer, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Lazar and uh, I love Jimmy Jim. Lazar came in with, um, I'm trying to think who he came in with. Um, Ricky, Ricky Ritzel, Ricky Ritzel and, um, I would think. Yeah. Ricky and, uh, well, they, they came separately, but it's Ricky, it was Ted oh, okay. and it was Pamela, uh, not Pamela, uh, oh gosh, Edie, Edie Scott. We wow. Edie Scott, uh, Ritzel and, um, and, uh, and Ted, they came in and that was so fun. And then, uh, R Lazar came a, a couple of weeks later. So that was always good. Joe Gull has been here. A dozen times. I know, uh, Joe. So, yeah. we, we have to come up with Joe and Susie and just get a group. Steve Wishnoff says he has to go, but he loves seeing all of us. I can't wait to come yeah. home again. He's I been commenting you. a lot. Steve Wishnoff. Oh, yeah, I know. I when the it. show is over, I'll post it to all of your pages. And you, you have to read through the comments because there are so many loving comments. I got to tell you. Oh, um, nice. You know, and I, and um, people are really, like Corinne's been saying, it's a real trip down memory lane. And it was some of those were some of the best years of her life, yeah. you know. Uh, really, we, uh, us too. It was oh a very charmed true. time. That's very charmed. True. That's why I you know what's you know what's funny. You don't always complete. know when you're in a great time. You, I mean, you're enjoying yeah. it and laughing, but you don't always understand that this will freeze forever in time, and how important those friendships are and that bonding and those nights. You don't forget them. Yeah, and you know, on a Sunday and a Tuesday, which were the there was Jerry and Amy were there Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday. But on Sunday and Tuesday specifically, when all the regulars were there together, if someone wasn't there, we were wondering where they were. Like it was, yeah, it was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Coming. yeah, we'll see yeah. you later, you know, that type of thing. And it was yeah. this was before we were able to communicate, you know, via it was email before cell phones, message. I'm sure, you know, cell right. phone, yeah. no cell phone, yeah, no, I, you know, no, none. No None internet, no Facebook. You just had to stay nope. connected. You were present. You were present. You were really present. Right. That's exactly what yeah. we were Now, doing. Um, yeah. sadly, we're almost at the end of our show. This mm -hmm. evening has flown by. It has. Uh, so I would love for both of you to leave our, our uh, listeners with some kind of a message. I always like to leave some kind of a message, whether it's about staying creative, whether it's about not giving up, like, 
I mean, Peter, during COVID, you could have very easily thrown in the towel and said, why me? You know, I just bought this restaurant. But you didn't. You stayed very positive. Yeah. You know, uh, so uh, what would you like to leave people with, uh, Peter? Well, I, you know, I, I think that the one thing I, I, I just have always lived my life by is just to, to always be positive and always look for the, the, the silver lining. Look for the positive or the happiness in, in your day. Understand that every day is a gift and that, you know, when you wake up in the morning and, you know, you're not in a good mood, figure out how to get into a good mood. Do something that puts you there so that you're not, that. you know, you're not, you're not unhappy. You're not miserable. You're not. And it's OK to be cranky every once in a while. But when you wake up and you know, you know, you need to just do something that that makes you feel good. And sometimes it's OK to unplug from everything and just relax and take take it all in and say, I need to just you know, take a day and, and think about me for a change, you know, yeah. get your, get a pedicure, get a massage, you listen mm -hmm. to music, turn, the, turn yeah. the computers off, do all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And Jerry, what, what would you like to leave the, um, the listeners and everybody with? I mean, you've been really, you, you know, you've, you've lasted the test of time. Yeah. You know, you just keep, like you said, adap you're adapting and things like that, but yeah. you know, your, your music never gets old. And um, thank you. So what would well, you like to leave people with? Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know if this is shallow, but I always tell people, you know, when they, when they say, oh, you look happy, you look good, I say, yeah. I do three things. Exercise, moisturize, listen to the music you listened to in high school. I love that. I love there that. And I've always <laughs> liked Harry. And I remember that. Yep. It's true. Yep. And it makes us feel great. Yeah, I'm doing a 70s show this, this weekend. Yes, I saw that. Sweet and dreams we are, flying machines. It's wonderful. We've been having such a great time because we're literally oh, James going. James Taylor, is up there. Yeah, we're going back. Figure of the James Taylor lyric. Yeah, exactly. Good. We're going yeah. back. You know, Sweet. and it feels good. And all our friends from that time are coming to see us. Good. You know? yeah. So yeah. I, I, Leo, pop back Enjoy. in, please. Uh, so I want to thank Hi, Leo. Uh, Jim Bell. Jim Bell is our producer and engineer on Armed Radio, armeddigitalmedia.com. Armed Leo, Radio amazing. Global. Thank com. you, Jim. Thank you, Leo. He, he is going to put this in podcast. It's going to be in podcast in about six to 12 hours on Spotify, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. Leo is our uh, Guy Friday right hand man. I'd be lost without Leo. He runs everything from California. So thank you, Leo Rorius. Rodriguez. <laughs> Jerry Diefenbach, Peter Ionello, everybody go see Rick's uh, Cafe, um, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Rick's Club American. And yeah. Jerry, is. tell us your schedule again, Jerry. Thursday, Stonewall. Friday, Don't Tell Mama. Saturday, Duplex. Okay. That'll be Thank it. you, everybody. Remember, we are the classics. Now, if you're a younger person, yeah. you can become a classic, too. Just keep doing what you're doing. Be respectful. Be kind. And create some memories. Be create yeah. memories. Yeah. Be kind. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Jerry, good to see Here, you. I love, love you guys. You. Thank you. Okay. Who I am. Who I am. Who I am.